When light shines through a double slit, that's made of two slits next to each other, it diffracts and spreads out, forming the diffraction patterns shown on these screens here. And you can see similarly to the single slit, we have a series of bright bands, which I'm highlighting now. These are called the maxima. And we also have a series of dark bands, which I'm highlighting now. These are called the minima. So how do these maxima and minima form? Well, it's all to do with interference. So let's imagine our light shining through our slits. So we have light that comes and it shines onto the slits here and shines through them. I'm gonna show light from the left slit in blue. So let's say we have light coming from our left slit and let's say it diffracts out and lands somewhere over here. Light from this slit is also gonna diffract out in all those directions. I'm showing it in red. And in order for the light to reach that same spot on the screen up here, it's traveled a different distance since those slits are separated from one another. So the light from the red slit has traveled a little bit further than the light from the blue slit. So these maxima shown on the screen here, these bright bands, those happen when the two waves are in phase and we have constructive interference when they reach here. So that would be when our wave from the left slit and our wave from the right slit are in phase when they arrive. In order for that to happen, the path difference of those two rays has to be some whole number multiple of the wavelength. That's shown in our equation here. I'm just gonna add path difference equals, and then here we have some whole number multiple of the wavelength. So that's what leads to these bright patches. On the other hand, we have the dark patches that form or dark bands. These are the minima and they occur at locations where the distance that the wave from the right slit has traveled means that it's out of phase with the wave from the left slit. They destructively interfere. And as a result, we get a dark patch. That's gonna happen at times when we have a half number multiple of the wavelength. So for example, if the red uh, the red wave shown in red coming from the right slit traveled half a wavelength more than the wave coming from the left slit shown in blue, we would end up with this situation happening, destructive interference. And as a result, we would have a minima. So this equation up here can be used to find either the maxima or the minima. And that M that's in the equation is going to either be a whole number to indicate minima, sorry, whole number to indicate maxima, or it will be a half number to indicate minima. So for example, if we look at our diagram of the pattern over here, this would be our first order maxima. So the M would be one in order to find that. This here indicated would be our second order maxima. So the M would be two for that one. And so on, this would be our third order maxima. If we wanted to find our minima, we can also do that using half numbers. So to find this minima here, our M would be 0.5. To find this minima here, our M would be 1.5. Or to find this minima here, our M would be 2.5. So that part, since it's the path difference, if it's a whole number multiple, that's what's leading to our bright patches since our waves are in phase and we get constructive interference. Whereas if we have half number multiples of the wavelength, that's giving us these dark bands or minima because when those waves arrive, they are out of phase by half a wavelength and therefore they destructively interfere.
So we're now going to practice using this equation to find uh, different things to do with our diffraction pattern. In this question, we have a student who wants to determine the separation between two slits. So you can see we've got two slits that the light is shining through. She shines a green laser beam of wavelength 5.30 times 10 to the negative seven meters through the slits to create the diffraction pattern shown. Then she measures the angle to the indicated bright band. So looking at our diagram, she has measured the angle here to this band. So based on what we know about the band numbers, this here would be our number one bright band. This here is our number two. So our M in our equation is going to be two. We're also given lambda, the wavelength of the light, 5.30 times 10 to the negative seven. And we're also given the angle here to that second order maxima. So that's our theta, 3.63 degrees. The unknown variable that we are left to find is D, the separation between the slits. So if we have a look up here, we have M in our equation, we have lambda, we have theta, and we're looking to find D. I find it really helpful to write out all my variables like I have here to make it easier to see what we know and what we're trying to find. Okay, so now on to solving the problem. It's asked us what's the path difference from the near slit to the indicated band and from the far slit to the indicated band. That's asking us for our M value, which is two. We know that there are two whole wavelengths of path difference between the waves coming from the two bands in order for them to be that second bright spot. So that's going to be two there. And finally, to find the separation between the slits, we're firstly going to need to rearrange our equation to get D as the subject. Then we can substitute in our numbers and solve to find the separation. So let's rearrange our equation first. I'm gonna write out my equation again down here. M times lambda equals D times sine theta. And I'm going to get theta on its own. Oh, sorry, D on its own. Right now, D is multiplied by sine theta. So I'm going to divide by sine theta to get rid of that. So I'm going to end up with D is equal to M times lambda divided by sine theta. That's got my equation rearranged successfully. Now I just need to put my numbers in from the question. So we'll do that now. M is 2, lambda is 5.30 times 10 to the negative seven. And then that's divided by sine theta, where theta is 3.63 degrees. So to solve, to find the separation between the slits, we're gonna put that into our calculator. Just be careful with the fact that sine needs to be in degrees since our angle is in degrees. So check your calculator, make sure you're in degrees, and then go ahead, pop this in, and that should give us an answer of 1.67 times 10 to the power of negative 5 meters. That's our separation between our slits. So we can pop that in our box here. Remember, when you put those numbers in positive physics in the website, you're using the E notation. So instead of times 10 to the power of, you can just write the letter E. So this would look like 1.67 E negative 5. So a couple of tips about this. Our equation here, the M is referring to bright bands. So whole numbers of M gives us the location of our maxima. Half numbers of them gives our locations of the minima. 
So make sure you have that correctly because it's different from the single slit one. And then lastly, just make sure your calculator's in degrees so that when you're putting numbers into sine, you're gonna come out with the right answer in the end.